Hey race fans, welcome to Backseat Drivers. I am Alex Weaver, back here in Studio 3. It was Alex Bowman who stole the show and surged to his first short track win ever. That makes eight winners in nine races if you're keeping track. Jonathan Merriman is joining us again from home and new here to the backseat, a very special guest and one of my good friends from Fox Sports, Caitlin Vinci is joining virtually. Hey guys, hey KV, how are you? I'm good. I'm so excited to finally be on this with you because I've watched many of these shows and this is my first time getting to be alongside you and Merriman. So it's great to be with you guys. Hey, I'm just ready to argue. Let's go. Always. No. I, I feel like I'm outnumbered here. I have the two Virginians that are uh, teaming up on me, but uh, let's get right into it. This is a segment we like to call left turn or right turn. Opposite directions require opposite opinions. Richmond was quite the roller coaster. What was the biggest surprise from Sunday's race? KV, I'm starting with you on this one. Okay, so I felt like the biggest surprise for me was our race winner, Alex Bowman. And I don't mean that in a negative fashion. I mean it as a pleasant surprise. Uh, and the reason I say that is because when you look at his history, his track history at Richmond, not the, not the best place for him. I mean, 12th or worse besides a ninth place finish that he had there in the past. So it, it wasn't one of his best racetracks. And even he seemed a little bit surprised uh, when he won that, that he was able to do that. So for me, that was a pleasant surprise to see Alex Bowman get the victory. I think um, Hendrick Motorsports as a whole has really come out swinging this year. They now have three of their drivers that have already gone to victory lane. Surprisingly, uh, our reigning champion, not one of them. Uh, but it was also cool to see the 48, right? Back in victory lane, that was a pleasant surprise because uh, we haven't seen that since 2017. So Alex Bowman, I think, getting the victory was a good surprise. It's nice to see, once again, another new winner. I like the variety. They always circle uh, Richmond as Hendrick Motorsports, not their strongest track either. So I think the whole organization might have been surprised that the 48 was back in victory lane there. Merriman, biggest surprise from Sunday. Well, you mentioned it. Hendrick Motorsports kind of struggled up and down all day long. But, you know, Bowman winning that short track race was a big surprise. But even more surprising to me with it being a short track, with it having so many cars, you know, going a lap down, the fact that Martin Truex Jr. and Alex Bowman were able to overcome penalties, you know, midway through late in that race was was really, really impressive. I think Martin got back there close to the top five if he wasn't in the top five. And then Greg Ives making that pit call uh, for those adjustments. I don't know what he dialed into that car. But he was, I mean, he was on the ball. He called his shot. He got the win. Bowman, of course, driving the car. But, man, Greg Ives really hooked Alex up there uh, on that last restart. Really special day for the 48. Uh, it was an especially tough runner-up finish, however, for Denny Hamlin, considering how strong he had been all day. And he'd been all season, really. Hamlin, who swept the first two stages, led a race high 207 of 400 laps. He took the bottom lane on the final restart. Merriman, let's talk about this. Were you surprised that he didn't take the top? No, I mean, and I don't think if you're going to pick Denny Hamlin apart for a restart, you go back to Bristol and why he didn't use the bumper on Joey Logano when you had single file when he could get there. Right. Look, I think this is this is has nothing to do with Denny picking the top or the bottom. He cleared himself. He was out front. Right. He had clean air. It was goes back to Greg Ives. Greg Ives dialed so much grip into that race car for about, I would say, eight laps. If there's three more laps, Denny Hamlin catches Alex Bowman, Denny wins the race. But, you know, this this thing wasn't lost behind the wheel for the 11. It was won on top of the pit box for the 48. Caitlin, you disagree or agree? Did that cost Denny the race? I'm a loving person. I agree with Merriman. Um, it's it absolutely is because of the adjustments that Greg Ives made. And, and listening to both Alex talking and Joey Logano post-race, they kind of attributed it to that, not the lane selection on the final restart. Alex was just able to fire off so well in that final restart. And Joey was saying it kind of made everybody else look a little silly. Uh, so I think that that's obviously why Denny wasn't able to get the win. Uh, it's certainly a disappointment for him because he has just been incredibly strong the whole year and just can't seem to, to cross that threshold, though, and get a win. But we know it's going to come. Merriman, you agree? A, a Hamlin win coming soon? <laughs> I mean... If you look at the statistics, how could it not come? <laughs> You're not come? a I mean, stats guy. Come on. 
He's had one finish outside of the top 10 the entire year. And you think of being that close, being that close, being that close. I mean, I'd get out of the race car and be pissed off too if I couldn't win the race, especially in his own backyard at a track that he's got, you know, numerous wins at. So, you know, the fact that Denny is fired up and Denny's a little irritated is a good sign for 11 fans because, you know, he's really good at Talladega. He's really, really good anywhere where, he, where four tires are on the racetrack. So uh, I think a win for Denny is is going to be here before we know it. Yeah, DH might have lost a little sleep last night, but his second place finish is the eighth top five finish in the opening nine races. So I would bet that that win isn't far off, like KV said. All right, sticking to the theme of surprises, another surprise this season has been the names in victory lane. The usual suspects have yet to have the luck and domination we've seen in recent seasons. So, Caitlin, who in your mind is the best driver so far that has not won this season? We just talked about him. Uh, it's Denny Hamlin for me. I mean, Merriman, you mentioned his statistics. Uh, he is an exceptionally talented race car driver. I think we all know when he hangs it up, he is going to be in the NASCAR Hall of Fame. Um, it's kind of the same conversation we have about him. He's so good, but doesn't have a championship. Now this year we're saying how great he is, but he hasn't won yet. Um, but I do think that that him and Chris Gabehart, it's truly unbelievable uh, what the two of them have done together since they've paired up. 13 wins. I think that every week you see that they have speed. He runs up front. He wins stages, he leads laps, the pit crew is on it, the driver's doing his job. So it's just a matter of time. Um, I think it's got to be a little bit frustrating for him. Uh, also, given the fact that some of his Joe Gibbs racing teammates have won uh, prior to him. But I think that Denny is the best driver right now that is yet to win. And juggling two teams now with 2311. Uh, DH is really doing it all. Merriman, who is your best driver so far that does not have a win? Do you want to take a guess or call Kyle Petty? Because I'm pretty sure he can tell you. <laughs> Do who you have there. your Chase Elliott uh, underwear on? <laughs> well, I think you have to give Chase the nod just because he is the defending champion. And, you know, in the Gibbs camp, you got two guys over there who have it won. And Christopher Bell was a little bit of a wild card at the road course. And, you know, not to discredit him, but it's not like he went out there and dominated an intermediate track where we kind of expected him to go out and win and win, you know, maybe win Bristol Dirt. I think if you look at Chase Elliott, you you are the only guy at Hendrick Motorsports who has not won a race yet. You are the defending champion. Um, so I think the the I think you have to kind of give him the nod. Everybody over there has proven to win. His he's been consistent. He's just got to close the deal. So I'm going to go with the nine in this category. Uh, well, Merriman, not to rub salt in the wound, but you had Brad Kozlowski as your winning pick for Richmond, and it looks like a really strong day. He Gets our going the wrong way award this week, unfortunately. He had a strong car in Virginia, but a strategy call for the two crew may have put his winning chances out of reach. Did it cost him the race? You know, I don't know. And and I'll give a nod to Vincey and, and the Fox crew covering that race because when when they made the announcement that he was staying out to try to save a set of tires, you know, Larry Mack got on the horn on TV and said, well, they're not going to use their entire tire allotment anyways here. So, I mean, you know, Penske's not hurting for, you know, trying to save a couple thousand dollars saving a set of tires. So I just don't understand the strategy there. I, uh, I'm still kind of scratching my head about it because Brad has proven to be one of the best guys out there at Richmond. He won that race last year. Uh, of course it happened in the fall and under the lights, but I just don't understand the strategy. I've picked Brad two weekends in a row and, uh, and it has not panned out for me. So, you know, you can blame it on Bullens, blame it on the strategy, blame it on me jinxing and picking him. I don't know. I'm still scratching my head uh, after that pit call. Caitlin, how's your head scratching? <laughs> I am scratching as well. I'm going to agree with him. I thought that was a bit of an odd uh, strategy selection. We know that Penske is always one organization that kind of goes a little bit outside the box sometimes with strategy. This time, obviously, it didn't pan out. Uh, you know, on short tracks, you don't necessarily have to pit for fuel like you would on an intermediate. You have the option to potentially run longer, but it's all with the hope that your car doesn't fall off. And uh, that's what we saw with Brad. It just fell off way too much. He wasn't able to maintain. Uh, didn't work out, uh, surprisingly. Still one of the winless drivers. I mean, I am personally surprised that we're talking about Brad in the sense that he still hasn't won yet. Uh, there's a number of them that you would have thought by now would have checked that box. Uh, so he ended up 14th on the day. Certainly not what he was hoping for. I am not a crew chief, though, so I guess I can't be too critical because I wouldn't know what the heck I'm doing anyway up there. So it didn't work out for them, but, you know, it could work out this weekend. 
<laughs> well, I do not know what the heck I'm doing up there either, but I can tell you one thing. Jeremy Bowens was not a happy camper leaving Richmond. He looked a little upset on the pit box. Uh, well, we're all hungry for some more racing and time for a little rapid fire in what we like to call the drive through. KV, short and sweet answers. Uh, let's keep this as concise as possible, but we love it when you argue with Merriman, so bring the heat here. Our reigning champ has not won yet, so I'm surprised to say this, but Chase Elliott's the only driver at Hendrick Motorsports, Caitlin mentioned it on the top of the show, who has not won yet. So KV, will Chase win at the next three tracks, those tracks being Talladega, Kansas, and Darlington? What do you think? I'm going to say yes. I think that he does. Last year, if you look at Chase's body of work, we could see he could win on all different types of tracks. Mile and a half, short tracks, road courses. Going to Talladega, he's won there in the past. Uh, if you look at, at his numbers there, I think that he has got a good shot. And Hendrick Motorsports always good on the super speedways. Merriman, Chase on the next three, yes or no? No, Talladega is too big of a wild card. Kansas is going to have Larson's name all over it, and Darlington is a place where Denny is probably better than anybody. So I think you got three guys there, or at least two guys there in one wild card race that could keep the nine out of victory lane. Well, color me shocked on that answer. Uh, I let's keep Chase Elliott. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, let's keep Chase Elliott in this next one, too. But I also want to throw in Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. All three of these drivers have an NASCAR championship. Harvick wrecked late in the final stage at Richmond. Kyle Busch did finish in the top ten, so a point save for him. But all three have one thing in common, and that's a zero in the wins column for 2021. Who will be the first to win, Harvick, Kyle Busch, or Chase Elliott? Merriman? Uh... I mean, I'm going to go with Kyle Busch simply because I think he's showing a little bit of promise. I think things with, with him and Bayshore are, are start. I mean, look, Ben Bayshore has probably got the hardest job in NASCAR right now. <laughs> he's a new crew chief to Kyle Busch, who hasn't won, who, by the way, would probably, you know, burn his house down finishing second, right, at this point. He wants to get a win. He wants to lock himself into the playoffs. So, look, I think some things are going to happen here. I don't know if it's going to happen over the next three weeks, uh, but I do think over the guys that you just mentioned, I think Kyle Busch finds victory lane first. KV? I'm going to disagree with you. I'm sticking with Chase Elliott. I just said I thought he could win uh, potentially at Talladega. I can't believe I'm saying this, but when you look at Kevin Harvick, Kyle Busch, Chase Elliott – None of them are really lighting the world on fire this year, which is shocking to me. This might be one of the biggest surprises so far of 2021. But I think Chase Elliott has a great opportunity, like I said, going back to a racetrack where he's won in the past. And I do think Hendrick, they, they normally have the super speedways figured out, like I said before. So I'm going to go Chase Elliott on this one. And I feel like I'll be the fan favorite for saying that. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, KV, I'm throwing this back a little bit too. Out of all those three, do they all get a win this season? Yes. No doubt. Yeah. I, I definitely don't think there's any argument that the three of those guys won't get wins. Uh, it's just taken a little bit longer uh, than I anticipated for all of them, really. I think more than everybody anticipated. Uh, we asked you fans at home, and 58% said Kevin Harvick would be the first to get a win. We didn't throw Chase Elliott in the mix because we knew he would uh, win the fan vote, per usual. Well, let's turn the page completely to this upcoming race weekend. A lot of teams have this one circled. Talladega is on deck, and you know what they say about Dega. Anything can happen at a super speedway. So let's separate the field into two teams, 2021 winners and those who haven't found victory lane yet. Pick your team for a Dega win. Are you going with an already win or a non-winner? Caitlin, who you got? I'm going with a non-winner, and it's simply for the sake of, like you just said, anything can happen, and it usually does. So <laughs> it could be a great opportunity race for someone who hasn't hasn't won yet. Uh, we sometimes see some very unique names making it to the finish. Uh, so I'm going to go with a non-winner, and selfishly, I just love the storyline of how many different winners we've had in 2021. So I want to keep it going. <laughs> yeah, me too. I want 16 by the regular end of the regular season. I'm all for it. Uh, Merriman, you going with a winner already this season or a non-winner? I'm going with a winner only because Pensy's got two guys who are really good at Talladega with the win already. Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney. I think your win, I think you probably got about over a 50% chance that, that one of those two guys are going to win the race, and I'll take those odds. Uh, well, we mentioned before that Talladega is the race to take chances, and it's really anybody's race to win. Basically, just throw a dart at a board. Uh, which driver is most ready for the chance at Talladega? I'm looking at drivers who maybe hope that Talladega is their chance to turn their season around. It's their chance to lock into the playoffs. So, Caitlin, I'm starting with you on this. Who needs Talladega? 
I think the driver who needs Talladega is Matty Benedetto. And uh, I just love this guy. I think he's such a great person on and off the racetrack. Uh, hasn't had the season, I think, probably that he was hoping for, only one top 10 so far this year. Um, but I think that he could be one of the ones that could come out and surprise us. And what a great feel-good story that would be if Matty D was able to get a big win in Talladega. Uh, so that's that's my kind of long shot pick. Yeah, man, the fans would be they're super excited about that one. Uh, Merriman, who needs Talladega? Eric Almirola has had a hard time finishing even his lunch this year. It has been absolutely exhausting to watch, but he had came away with a top 10 at Richmond. He's a winner at Talladega. I think this is where he could, you know, not necessarily win because I think the win's going to come out of the Penske camp. Mm -hmm. But if he can come out of here with a top five out of Talladega, backing that up with a top 10 at Richmond, I think that's what, you know, fans of Eric and that 10 car want to see. So I think Eric can't wait to get down to Talladega and take his chance down there. All right, Caitlin, thanks for joining us. I'm so glad I at least got to see you virtually. KV and the gang at Fox Sports will have you covered all weekend with coverage out at Talladega. Sunday will be a show you don't want to miss. We head to Sweet Home, Alabama. Get your heart rate monitors ready for Talladega. It's a 2 p.m. Eastern green flag on Fox. Enjoy it, and we'll see you right back here in the back seat next.